Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. There was deep snow in Greendale. Peter Fogg was busy clearing the roads. Nobody could get about until he had shifted the snow. Postman Pat, and Sam Waldron, <laughs> and Miss Hubbard followed in Peter's tracks. The Reverend Timms was clearing his path. He waved to Pat as he slowly went by. Keep my seat warm, Jess. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Isn't this snow awful? It's a good thing Peter Fogg's clearing some of the roads. We'd never have got through without him. They do say there's ten-foot drifts up at Intake Farm, Pat. And here's an urgent parcel for George, up at Hill Top. You'll never get there today, you know. Oh, dear. But I'd better take it just in case. I, I usually manage somehow. Well, mind how you go, Pat. We don't want you getting buried in the snow. Oh, I'll be all right. Cheerio. We can always dig ourselves out, can't we, Jess, if we get stuck? Pat was on his way. He had to drive carefully along the slippery roads. At Greendale Farm, the twins were waiting for him. Oh! Who threw that? You little monkeys. Two can play at that game. Hey! What's going on? Oh, dear. Sorry, Mr. Thompson. I didn't know you were here. I, I was aiming at the twins. That's all right, Pat. It's only a bit of fun. You're just in time, cos the road's blocked and the snowplow stuck in a big drift. We've come to dig it out. You could give us a hand. OK. I can't get on with my round anyway till the road's clear. I'll just give Mrs Pottage her letters first. The snow's bad this year, Mrs Pottage. Well, <laughs> the twins are enjoying it. <laughs> yes, so I've discovered. Bye, Pat.
Peter Fogg was already digging when they got to the snowplow. Here we are, Ted. This is the spot. Whoops. Don't worry, Peter. We'll have you out in no time. Thank goodness for that. Phew, it's warm work, I can tell you. Come on, lads, put your backs into it. Hang on, I'll see if I can get through now. took a run at the snowdrift. Come on, Pete, you can do it. He was through. The twins had been busy. Bye. Bye, Pat. Bye. stopped at the vicarage with a letter for the Reverend Timms. But Dr Gilbertson came to the door instead. Come in, Pat. The poor Reverend slipped on the ice and broke in his leg. Oh, dear. That is bad news. Hello, Pat. Just look at this. Isn't it stupid? A piece of bad luck, I'd say, Reverend. But I've brought a letter to cheer you up. Ah, yes, from Cousin Sylvia. That'll make good reading. Oh, but what about the parish magazine? I was going to take it round today. I can take it with my letters, said Pat. No trouble at all. I'll see they get through. Cheerio, Reverend. Thompson ground, Dorothy Thompson was out collecting the eggs. I hope you haven't any letters for Hilltop, she said. The snow's so bad that Peter had to turn back. The plough just couldn't get up the hill. Hmm, I've got a parcel for George marked urgent. What can I do? Perhaps I could walk it. I've got a better idea. We can use the old farm sledge. I've got to take some food up for the sheep. Well, it's a long time since I was on a sledge. But it looks like the only way of getting the parcel there. Here we are, said Alf. You'd better take George some groceries, said Dorothy. He might be running short being snowed up like this. They loaded up the sledge. Uh. Off they went.
It was hard going uphill, <laughs> but lovely downhill. The sheep were glad to see them. Just look at that drift. George's house was nearly buried. George was out. He'd gone to feed his sheep. So Pat left the food and the parcel on the table. We'll have a fast ride downhill, said Alf. Give us a push. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on, Pat. Help. Oh, oh, oh. Oh dear. You all right, Pat? All in one piece, I think. Hold tight. Hey! Mind that tree. Whoa! Ho 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 ho! Hey! My goodness, <laughs> that's one way of delivering a parcel. We'll need a hot drink after that, said Alf. Here we are, all ready for you. Jess was glad he'd stayed by the warm fire. Thanks, Mrs. Thompson. Just what I need. Aye, there's no like a good cup of tea. Thanks for the ride. Goodbye. The rest of Pat's round was in the valley and the roads had been cleared and gritted by now. No more digging or sledging today, said Pat. It takes more than snow to stop us, Jess. Greendale was having a hard winter, and there'd been another snowfall in the night. It was icy as well. Postman Pat was out on his rounds as usual, but he had to go very carefully. Sam Waldron was out too, with his mobile shop. Hello Pat, rough weather. Hello Sam, how's it going? Well, I don't think I'll be able to get this van up to Granny Dryden's with the groceries. I'll take them with the letters, said Pat. Righto, here they are. That'll keep her going for a while. Thanks, Pat. Mind how you go. Cheerio. And Pat was on his way. 
He skidded and slithered along the steep road to Granny Dryden's house. She was glad to see him, especially when she saw he had her groceries as well as a letter. Good morning! Oh, thank you, Pat. That's lovely. And that letter will be from that lass of mine down in London. I can't find me reading glasses anywhere. Would you tell me what she says, Pat? Certainly. Now, let's see. She says, Dear Mum, Just a line to let you know... Speak up, please, Pat. I can't hear you. We'll all be able to come up to Greendale to see you for your birthday. Jim started school this week, and Dad's bought a new car. All well, and hoping you are too. All our love, Sally and family. Eee, that's good news. Thanks, Pat. Have a cup of tea. Thank you, Mrs Dryden. Oh. Ah. Just the thing, this cold weather. I'll be on my way before it starts snowing again. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Pat's next stop was at Ted Glenn's workshop. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Why, brr, it's cold outside. That's a grand stove you've got there. I could do with that in my van. Ooh, it's lovely. Here's somebody writing from a warm place. Australia. Yeah, it'll be Albert. It's ages since he's written. That reminds me. I found Bert's old skates this morning. I reckon they'll be just about your size, Pat. Do you fancy trying them out? They say the tarn's frozen hard. Well, I don't know. I'd love to have a go. Is the ice safe? Has anyone checked it? <laughs> yes, Miss Hubbard. Take them anyway. You never know when they might come in handy. And I've got some of my own. Thanks, Ted. Cheerio. blowing the snow into deeper and deeper drifts. Soon, Pat had to stop. The road was blocked. He thought he would never get through with his letters now. Then he looked across to the tarn and saw someone skating on the ice. It's worth trying, Jess. I can take a short cut across the ice. Come on, Pat, it's lovely! You stay here, Jess, and mind the van. I'll just put these skates on.
Here we go. Whoa. Hello, Pat. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Special ice delivery today. Thank you. Good skating. George Lancaster was still on the ice. He did get a surprise when Pat whizzed by with a letter. Mrs. Thompson was out for a spin too. Ouch! Hello, Pat. What are you doing down there? Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Look at Jess. <laughs> Come on, Jess. That's enough skating for today. We'll get back on wheels. There were no children at the school. They were all snowed up at home. But the snowman was there. Pat had an envelope in his pocket, so he addressed it to the snowman. Mr. Snowman, the Drift, Greendale School, and tucked it under his arm. Hello, who's that? It was Miss Hubbard and Ted. Hello, Pat. Have you seen my bicycle? The snow must have buried it. We'll have to find it. You dig there, Ted. And you try here, Pat. Can it be? Who left this gate open? On with the search. Tut, tut, tut. Ted? Found something? Hm, just an old kettle. I think it's here. Just in time for choir practice. I'll be off now. I'll open the gate for you, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye.
Bye, Miss Hubbard. Nothing stops her, does it? See you in church on Sunday. I'm coming, Jess. Time to go home. Cheer up, Jess. This snow can't last forever. It had been wild and windy in Greendale. A lot of branches had fallen from the trees. Some had broken the telephone wires. Dear me, said Pat, that's a nuisance. There'll be a fair number of telephones out of action now. Oh, I wonder if the Reverend Tim's kept that stamp for me. Better pop in and see him. I hope he remembered. Hello, Reverend. I just popped in to see if you kept that Australian stamp yesterday. Of course, Pat. Just the thing for your collection. Waste not, want not. Thanks. But where are you off to, Reverend? London, to meet my sister Elsie. She's flying over from Australia. Haven't seen her for years. Here's that stamp. Thanks. Such a nuisance. I'll have to visit everyone to cancel church meetings while I'm away. Such a bother. With a train to catch, too. If only the phone was working. It's this wind we've been having. It's brought the wires down. Well, I'll just have to hurry. The train goes in an hour. Hope you get round in time, Reverend. Cheerio. Have a good trip. called at the post office for the letters. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. I'm not late, am I? Not really, but I thought you might have trouble getting through, what with all these trees blown down. Pat told Mrs. Goggins all about the Reverend Tim's letter, his trip to London, and his telephone being out of action. E, it's a bad job, isn't it? My phone's working anyway, said Mrs. Goggins. Hello, Greendale Post Office here. Who is it? Elsie Timms. Urgent message for the Reverend Timms. Flight diverted to Manchester. You'll come on to Greendale by car. Yes, I'll ask our postman to dash over and tell the Reverend not to go to London after all. I've got the message. Tell her I'm on my way. Bye, Pat. I hope you're in time. Bye. Hold tight, Jess. You're going to see some pretty hot driving now. Look out, Ted!
Looks as though the Reverend's gone. I'll leave a note in case he calls back before he goes to the station. I might even catch up with him at Miss Hubbard's. Now, Jess, we can take a shortcut along the back roads. It was a bit rough. Oh, no! Now, who's left that there? We'll never get past it. There's only one thing for it now. Come on, Jess. We'll have to walk it. Hello, Pat. What's all the hurry? Morning, Miss Hubbard. I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Have you seen him? Oh, he went a few moments ago. He's in a hurry, too. He wants to catch the London train. Oh, no. He mustn't go to London. I've got an urgent message for him. He did say he had to call at Ted Glenn's first. You might catch him there. You can borrow my bicycle. Go on. Thanks, Miss Hubbard. I'll try anything once. Come on, Jess. Hold tight. Oh, dear. I couldn't do this every day. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh. oh, this is hard work. Oh! Hello, Pat. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? You all right? I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Oh, you're too late. The Reverend's gone. Uh, but he said he'd call on Granny Dryden before he catches his train. Oh, no. Just look at that front wheel. It looks very peculiar. Leave it to me. I'll fettle it. You can borrow these roller skates. I've just mended them. You'll fairly move when you've got these on. Well, I said I'd try anything, and I must catch the Reverend before he catches his train. Thanks, Ted. Here we go again. Oh, oops! You're doing fine, Pat. It's not so good uphill. How do you stop? Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Meanwhile, Sam was taking the Reverend to the train. I thought I saw Pat dive over that gate, said Sam. 
Hello, Sam. Ah, Reverend. Thank goodness you haven't gone to London. Pat told the Reverend all about his sister's phone message, saying she was coming straight to Greendale. Lord bless us, what a good thing you caught me in time. There's no need to go to London now. Thank you, Pat. Here comes Peter Fogg, said Sam. We'd better get out of the way. Goodbye. Peter was following Sam's van along the road. Hello, Pat. Sorry I blocked the road with me trailer. I'll give you a ride back to your van. Thanks, Pete. I couldn't walk it. Here's the little story of a very special cat Who's the friend and good companion of a certain postman Travelling through the country with his good friend by his side Pat knows his cat just likes to be there For he always likes to ride through the beautiful valley And its lovely countryside As he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by Jess is his cat Jess is his cat Yes, is his cat, and it's always been like that, and it's always been like that, always been like that, always been like that, ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten, ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten. All the folks in green, they like to wave and stop to chat. For they always like to see Pat As he goes by with his cat Through the beautiful valley And its lovely countryside As he sits up by the window And the views go gliding by Jess is his cat Jess is his cat Jess is his cat And it's always been like that And it's always been like that All right, but... Yes, thanks, Pete. Cheerio. Now, where did I put my pen? I must have left it at the vicarage. The Reverend Timms was carrying his sister's luggage into the house. I made it. Thanks to you, Pat. I got back just before my sister arrived. Oh, and I found your pen on my doorstep. Thanks, Reverend. I hope your sister enjoys a visit. Bye, Pat. Goodbye, Jess. Just the cast. 